Now I know a lot of guys on YouTube are singing the praises of the Binbox controller. However, when we compare it to the other offerings available, is it really that awesome? If you're new to this channel, you may not already know this, but I have done an individual review on each one of these controllers. We've talked about the pros and the cons of each controller, but what I didn't talk about is how they stack against each other and which one I would pick as the ultimate handheld all around Joy-Con controller replacement for the Nintendo Switch. Now first we should talk about what each controller is so you know what we're looking at here. I will put links to all of these controllers in the description if you feel compelled to buy any one of them or all of them. So starting over on this end, we have the Hori Split Pad Pro. We have the Nexilux Pro Twin Controller and the Binbok Nintendo Switch Controller. For this comparison, there are a few things that are important to me. Number one is that the controller must fit in my hand nicely. It must be a good controller. Like I'm not gonna just deal with crap because it's a cheap controller. It must function at least as good as the Nintendo Switch regular Joy-Cons, just in a bigger form factor. The first thing that we want to talk about is this guy here, the Hori Split Pad Pro. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. The thing that you might not understand is this particular controller, you'll notice it does not have a little dock for the controller. It is just a controller pad just like this. That is because this controller does not support wireless mode. There are no batteries in here. There are no vibration controllers in here. There's no IR sensor. There's no Bluetooth. There's nothing. Once it's disconnected from the switch, it will do nothing at all until you plug it into the switch. So this controller is made strictly for using your switch in handheld mode, just like this, as you normally would. As soon as you dock the controller, it's useless. As soon as you try to use it wirelessly, they are useless. For that reason, before we even get anywhere into this review, I am going to completely count the Hori Split Pad Pro controller out of this comparison, and that is because it does not do anything that the regular Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons do, except function when it's connected to the Switch. That leaves two other options. First of all, the price. Both of these are about $45 to $50 Canadian, which means they're somewhere around $40 US. They're both about the same price. Both of them, as you can see, come with some sort of a dock so that you can use the controller in a pro controller type format. Both of them have vibration. Both of them have Bluetooth. That means you can use them wirelessly. Both of them can be used individually. So like this in a regular sideways Joy-Con style. They both have reasonably long life batteries, which means you can get gaming for a long time. They both support USB-C charging. So this one does it in the side port here, which has got two side ports, one there and one there. This one has the USB-C port in the bottom. Also, unlike the Switch controllers, this one has back buttons, which are mappable. So you can map any button on this side of the controller to this back button and any button on this side of the controller to this back button. This guy does not have back buttons at all. So if you need back buttons, this one would be out for you and you'd be looking at that one. But there's other things about this that I like that you might want to consider. Both of them do support turbo functions where you can add turbo functions to any of the buttons on the faceplate. And they have memory function where, for example, on this one, you can program a button sequence combination into any one button. So if you're playing something like Smash Bros, where you have to do a certain button combination to totally waste your opponents, well, you could cheat a little bit, hit the M button, program that in, and then whenever you press the button, it does that move for you. All of the hard features of these two controllers have been covered now. They're fairly comparable. The biggest difference so far is that this has back buttons, this does not. This has RGB, which this one does not. This one does have LEDs, 
but they're just green and they're annoying. Don't. That gives you a good idea of what you're looking at here. Now this does come in a number of color combinations and so does this. I just went for the clear because it looked cooler and I liked it better than the red. This one has solid colors and different things as well. So don't get hung up on the colors too much. So let's talk about how these feel in your hand. First of all, I really like how this one feels in my hand. It fits perfect. It's not too big. It's not too small. When you put it on the switch, it feels right. The other thing that's nice about this is the buttons are very clicky, so they're very short throw. It feels more pro controller like as well as the, the face buttons are clicky. They're short throw. You just push them. That is a plus for these. This is this wins the button test by comparison. These buttons have very long throw. So when you push them, they're very, very like annoyingly long throw. The plus for this controller is the analog sticks have very good precision to them and they have excellent control. You can definitely feel the size of these. They are more like a regular joystick that you're used to on any other gaming console. Whereas these guys are still a little bit small. They're just a little bit on the small side. The other thing that I noticed, which is a huge detractor for me, it's a, it's a big deal. This analog stick works phenomenally well, but this one seems to have a very big dead zone. I have a hard time playing, like I'm playing Grand Theft Auto right now, and I have a real hard time aiming on people with this be, and moving the camera around because of that dead zone. It's quite annoying. I'm not sure if it's a manufacturer defect of this controller or if all of them are like that. I suspect it's a manufacturing thing because this controller does not have that dead zone like this one does. So I think that this one was just a manufacturing defect. And if I got another one, then this one might function perfectly fine. If it does, then this controller is currently my favorite. The nice thing about this one is that it does have these back buttons and that is nice, especially if you need back buttons. This controller is surprisingly light, especially since it has batteries compared to this one. This controller feels more solid. It does, like you pick this up, it feels like an empty hunk of plastic that is very, very cheap. This one is solid, it's small, it's tight, it feels better. Now it is time to pick the winner of all of these controllers. After I've tested them all, I've game tested them all, I've used them all in a number of scenarios, I've compared battery life, I've compared usability. When I factor everything in, the Nexi Lux is the controller for you. I, it just feels right, the size is right, the functionality is right. Everything is right. If you can live without RGB and you can live without back buttons, this is the controller for you. It is, I promise you. It's the right size for small hands, big hands, medium hands. It fits on the switch nicely. It feels nice. The quality feels there. It is an excellent controller. It's cheaper than the regular Joy-Cons and it functions better than these other options. The buttons feel infinitely better. Now that you've heard my thoughts, if you've tried any of these controllers, tell me your thoughts. Post something in the comments below. Let me know, did I get this right? Did I miss something? Is there a feature that I forgot that would make this the winner? Or do you agree that these are the ones? Do you like the Hori controller, the Split Pad Pro? Do you prefer that? Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.